Good morning, welcome back to American Truck Simulator. This is David Steele and here's my truck. Or well, here is a truck I'm going to be experimenting with today. So this is a Peterbilt uh, 579. It's the uh, the stand-up sleeper, as it's called. There are three sort of sizes, three, three variants, the day cap, the stand-up sleeper and the high-rise. Today's color scheme, you might call it Fitzgerald um, Green. I'm not entirely sure what this color is. But this particular machine was one of my test vehicles when I was uh, playing around with the Detroit Diesel Series 60 for the steel production engine pack. Yes, complete plug. Today's video is uh, to showcase some of the new engines and some of the tweaks that I've rec very recently made to the steel productions engine pack. Again, another shameless plug. So let's go up here. I have a lot of engines and a lot of Z mods in here. Uh, I'm a big fan of Z mod sounds. But let's just go ahead and just focus on the steel productions engine pack. So what have we got? Well, the biggest addition uh, is the Caterpillar engines. So I added the uh, 3406 range and there are a few. In fact, um, let's go up here and just take a look. So we have the A series, the B series, there's a C series in here and the E series. So here's the C series um, ranging from 550 at the top end. That's the uh, 3406E, the fully electronic version, down to 280 at the low end. And we've got a, a normal 280 and a 280 economy that has a lower engine speed and a bit more torque. Fantastic. I also, oops, wrong one. I also added a couple of variants of the Caterpillar C16. See if I can find those. There we go. A 575 and a 600. And that's all fine and well. And there's a whole bunch of engines I've yet to add and I'm still good in the works and all, all good and done. If you are subscribed to this mod, I do try and update it fairly regularly. I really want to add the year of engine to um, a lot of the engines um, I've got in here. So most of them, um, like for instance, the M11, I don't have years. There's actually an update. Those are a 1994 the particular version. And they'll be coming soon. The ISMs, I forget what year they are now. I may not even have that one included. And the last thing I did, and I want to go ahead and we're going to run, do a, run a trip today with um, the MX-11, I think. What should we choose? Let's just go with a fairly mid-range um, 400. Is I imported the sound from the DAF uh, XD or the DAF 2021 uh, and later uh, trucks from Euro Truck Simulator 2 and pulled them into ATS. And I gotta say, I was very surprised and happy with the results. So I'm gonna go ahead and showcase that change. MX11 400, what gear do we want to use? What gearbox? Well, it just so happens that the uh, the Packard TX12 is essentially the Endurant HD, the, the 12 speeds of this particular gearbox here. Let's go ahead and run it with a 293 um, differential. Um, I think that's gonna work out great. So I'm gonna take a note of what we're doing today, 293, lest I forget. And we're gonna take a trip and I've seen that there's a weather change in version 1.49 which was released on thanksgiving <sighs> the day my last video was released when i was playing around with the uh, open beta we're in the northern we're in montana and there's a there's a weather change that they've mentioned depending on some northern states now i'm wondering if that is the aurora borealis I may have said that wrong if i did please correct me down down in the comments below so we're going to take a trip um, in the evening and see if we can see some of this. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish up here and um, I'll be back in a jiffy. And we're back. Thanks to the wonders of YouTube, I can do this in a flash. So it's now the evening. Let's get forward a little bit of time. And um, we've just backed up to a trailer and I went inside, see the form, grab a cup of coffee and be on my way. And a quick check at the trip today. We're going about as Northern as I can get it. I mean, we're almost touching Canada. 
Um, almost. I can't go much further north than this. And it's a four hour trip. So I'm, I'm hoping if it's a clear night and it's about sort of 6, 6.30, 7 p.m., we're gonna, we but the best chance of seeing some of those, uh, some of those weather effects that we're talking about. So let's go ahead and jump in the truck. I'm gonna um, start it up and let's listen to the uh, Euro Truck Simulator 2 sound. Sounds a little different, right? And uh, we're using the automatic headlight option. That's a, a new feature and uh, it doesn't think that we need the headlights on. This time of day, what, what is it, 6.30. This time of day, I would possibly be using the headlights myself, um, but we're not going to worry about that too much. We're using the uh, transmission in automated mode today. The Eaton Endurant is a is a automated transmission anyway, so uh, it's going to be shifting for me unless I so feel the need to force the shift. Gearing is pretty high, 55 is just over a thousand RPM. But the MX-11 uh, peak torque is from 900 RPM to, depending on the range of the model variant, 1400 or so RPM. So we've got a lovely broad uh, torque plateau to play around with. We do have 1450 foot-pounds of torque, but we're only calling sort of uh, 16,000 pounds of, it looks like, pickup trucks. Is that about right? Three pickup trucks, 16,000 pounds? I dare say. Um, it's not a particularly heavy load and we've got 400 horses um, which is the typical measurement of power in uh, American trucks American heavy duty engines so times I reckon we'll get there records will get there at 11 we don't need to get there till um, well, actually 1 124 so we're gonna have to uh, get a bit of a move on let's go ahead and turn that off yeah, we're good there but I don't have to be um, excessive. Now, this uh, this engine, it's one of my um, favorites, maybe. I love the idea of lowish powered engines delivering um, cargo compared to the high powered engines. Because don't get me wrong, I could have used a 550 horsepower, 600 horsepower Cummins in this uh, truck and it would have been absolutely fine. I am speeding. Let's go ahead and the cruise but where's the challenge so I enjoy the the, the X12 the ISX 12s and the MX 11s for getting the job done with a bit more of a challenge now yes if you're using an automated the challenge is done by whoever's coded the engine at the shift points in this case I admit that would be me but to get the most done to get the most from it you have gotta tweak it just right Disable cruise here, we'll coast to a halt up behind this white car. Is it a, is it a Tesla? Go straight. I think it might be. Let's switch to that view here. Yep, I guess it's a Tesla. And the lights went, so that's perfect. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I, I enjoy making the most of a fairly low powered engine. Um, and that as well if you're using a fairly hard economy in the game um, mileage makes a difference so you want something that's going to get good fuel consumption low fuel consumption and that doesn't always mean a smaller engine um, it doesn't always mean a, a less powerful engine in fact wow these brakes are a bit sensitive in fact sometimes the lesser powerful engines are um, you know make it harder to get economy so fleet trucks, typically about the 400 horsepower. Torque is anywhere from sort of 1450 to maybe 1700. 1750, I think, for some of the Detroit diesels. Seems to be the sweet spot. Arguably, I would maybe prefer a, a 1650 torque engine, but this is a fairly light cargo. I'm not anticipating any issues with today's delivery. Ah. <sighs> Basically what I'm saying is I have pretty much the right tool for the job. So that's the plan. The weather's forecast is looking good because I told it to be good. Although it's overcast, it's not going to help me see anything in the sky. We'll see. Now, has it kept my, has it turned my lights on yet? No, not yet. Now with, uh, is it? Three or four cars ahead of me. 
I may not get through on this line. Let's let's see. Okay, I guess I am. Only just though. I cut the corner there a little bit. Not the the best truck driving experience. And of course I'm you know, I immediately went to the right hand lane. You're supposed to turn left and stick in the left lane. I didn't, oh dear. Again, we'll coast up to a halt here. So yeah, I'm I'm a fan of the MX-11 um, in the uh, the Peterbilt 579, Kenworth T680. Um, suits the engine. It's got a really workable torque curve. Yeah, it's a it's one of my favourites. We'll not be out dragging this Mustang to my left, but that's okay. We could surely tow something up a hill better. Well, that's not, maybe not. Maybe we couldn't. Okay. A little disappointed that the sky is still overcast, but uh, I can't. I mean, I can change the the weather. I just don't really want to. Are we cheating or spoiling it a little? So we're doing what 1,200 revs, or 1,150-ish revs in, in uh, the tenth, 35. Could try and force an upshift, but I'm 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 not going to. I'm gonna let the gearbox do its thing. That's looking a bit rainy. I was hoping it wouldn't rain. Oh well. We'll see. Some of the other new weather uh, effects I've seen, or rather in a storm, you get lightning. You get big forks of lightning, and that, that is pretty cool. What am I doing with my accelerator use? Okay. <clears throat> Alright, so I think we're on the open road. Let's get the speed up to, um, I'll just check my time. <sighs> I've got lots of time. So, we'll set it at 55 and see what happens. We should be able to get there, but this is a bit of a climb. I like this, this haze in the air, though. So it's in 12th, just under 55. It's in top gear. Looks like it's put the headlights on as well, which is uh, nice. Oh, look at the mist on the right hand side. Let's bump the speed up to 65, but isn't that pretty? Maybe that's the uh, the weather effect. I hadn't seen that. That looks very cool. I'm going to make sure I don't drive off the road, though. I really cannot drive in third person view. Okay. Limit's now gone down to 65, and this might be a little quick, but I guess we're doing okay. He says, you know, with the central uh, central line. <clears throat> So I'm not going to say that this this engine is exactly a Z-Mod sound effect, but it's different, and I, I enjoy it. And maybe I enjoy it because it's different, rather than because it is you no know, amazing quality. Okay. Got a pass on the way station. That's good. I'm going to drop the speed though. Let's let the car car no let the truck coast down to 55. Speed limit of 60, but we're, we're going below that. That's fine. A little issue with this particular Peterbilt is the, the speedometer is a little hard to see. And uh, these kind of lighting conditions. It's also difficult in bright sunlight. But don't worry, it's going to be getting dark soon. That's going to help. Wants the speed to drop again. Gently tiptoe around here. Let's drop the cruise to 45. We need a bit of an engine brake. We don't need it. Okay, using a bit of it there, maybe. I suspect this goes to 35. 
So, yes, it does. <clears throat> The trip computer showing in my dashboard is now saying my average is 8.3 to the gallon. Um, and I'm, I'm driving gently, I'm, I'm being very kind of careful with the, the power management. It's a small engine, it's, uh, it's about what I would expect. Though I do see numbers um, from real truckers and you know they're getting sort of 10, 11 to the gallon and you, I tend to struggle to get that in the game. Now I know some of the reason for that is um, hills are steeper because the map is condensed and that is something that do I really want to tune things too much to get amazing economy figures? No, not that much. This lighting is very pleasant though. It wasn't a, a it wasn't a mystery that I chose a 293 um, differential because uh, I've used this engine a lot. So I dropped the cruise to 35 and let the the truck uh, coast down 235 along this stretch. It will do pretty quickly. We're going up uphill. It's down to 40. So downshift a bit of power in 10th gear. There, there we go. Okay. The average went up to 8.6, but that's because we were coasting for a lot. That wants me to stick to 35. This will push me back time-wise, um, so I've got to 1 124, I think it said, to get there. And that's assuming that you can do whatever the, the speed it thinks that you should be able to do, which is not 35. Still in the 65 limit. Right, you see, I can use uh, main beam, but I've got the automatic main beam function turned on, and I'm not entirely convinced that it works as well as it does in a real car, but it's nice to have. It's just a little hard to see that it's turned on because it's not entirely dark yet, and I wouldn't expect it to be used in this, this kind of weather. That's pretty. Just a half second late there on getting it back to um, the view I wanted. It looks like there might be a viewing area on the right. I may have to come back and try that. This this dusk lighting is 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 really it's very pretty, but to drive in in real life it, it can be a little dangerous because it, you you can't assume that everyone's going to. Um, put the lights on and if you have that sort of pavement grey colour car you're not going to be visible there's a bit of engine brake here the engine brake is not the strongest I'm going to force the downshift it didn't like that prepare to stop yep so we have a red light up ahead we have plenty of fuel can't easily see that but it's the bottom left gauge and it's the needle is pretty much wedged up against the full and a service brake here kill the engine brake see this little settlement that will be turning left and this is about the most northern point in fact let's skip to the map almost the most northern point we've just gone gone past it but pretty much the most northern point on the map we've just gone into is this Idaho I think it's Idaho Yes, and Washington is right ahead of us, but there's there's no way to get there without going the route that I'm taking. Time for a sip of water, I think. <sighs> I don't recall if the sunset and sunrise is so quick in the southern states. In real life, it's not. A big difference between living in the UK and living in Texas is the sunset is is just over so so quickly. And that dusk period doesn't last very long. In the UK, it lasts quite a while. It seems like an hour. I think the bus has got the right idea. We should use the right hand light. 
Yeah, see the, the headlights flashed on there. Taking a half mile to change lanes. Just not doesn't make me everyone's friend, but Okay, we're just going over 35. Let's use the engine brake to keep the speed under control. Kill the engine brake. Okay. I will need to use it again in a little bit, I'm pretty sure of that, but right now we're holding the speed at just under 35. What's that? 33, 34. Got a trace of power. Just a trace. Yeah, I'm gonna set the cruise at 31, I think. I don't really want to stop. I don't want to impede the flow of traffic that much. But I don't want to get busted speeding. Quick check of our ETA, it reckons, okay. 22. Mm. Well, that's good. How much does an hour change? Pacific. PDT is Pacific time, isn't it? Hmm. Okay. Well, we can still take our time. I don't think we're going to see any Aurora Borealis, though. It's too light for that still. So my trip is showing my instantaneous consumption is uh, four and a half, and my average is now dropped to 8.7. It was 8.9 just a couple of miles ago. But I'm okay with that. It's a pretty steep hill. My speed's got up to 45. My limit's got up to 45. But we'll keep it at 30 right now. Oh, it got dark. I think I really am holding everyone up now, though. Um, there's a, a light coming up. So I don't really want to accelerate just to then have to just slow down. It's gone to green, but I've got traffic in the way. Got to use a left-hand lane up here. I guess we'll use it now as a gap. Okay. And that may actually be not turning right. Oh, we'll have to stop anyway. Okay. All right, that's fair enough. Go ahead, I'll use the, uh, the parking brake again. Let's take a look around. Do we see anything up in the sky that's interesting? Nope, unfortunately not. That's okay. It's fine. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, we, uh, looks like that last truck might be a work truck. In fact, those three pickups may all be, be work pickups. The spec of the Peterbilt I'm in is closer to a fleet spec. We've got sort of steel wheels. and Yes, we do have the, the chrome mirrors. That's mostly because my, my front wing mirrors, they have to be chrome. They're either the old fashioned round chrome ones or the more modern, probably plastic, plasticized chrome and not real chrome. Why are we all stopping up here? Oh, oh no. Is the road closed? I think it might be can't actually see from here. Um, I'm gonna guess it is, so let's go ahead and just use the right lane. Yep, I guess it is. Okay. Go on past that, or Taurus. Taurus, I think. Yep. Okay. I hope we can get through the, this way. I'm sure that we can. I did. Uh, I do have diversions and detours up to 33%, just to make it a little bit more of a challenge. Not always fun, you know, if you're running late to a destination and you've got to take a diversion and it's sort of 90 miles out of your way. Okay, we can get through this way. But, um, but sometimes, you know, the game is a little easy. And yeah, we, we could, I think, skip through Sandpoint if we had to. Open the window. I guess that's what I would do in real life. To express some frustration at having to go, having to take a diversion. I wonder what happened up there. So I'm enjoying the, like I say, I'm enjoying the, the different in difference in the sound effect. It's 
my sleeper light? I've got some stuff in there. Let's talk a little bit about the Caterpillar 3406. Not so much about the engine, but the actual development of the engine was my biggest single engine um, addition yet. I did a lot for the Detroit Diesel DD13, 15 and 16, that, that, that's a Z-Mods engine. Um, I did a lot of work to add those engines to, um, or to get those engines ready for scene. I think that was 14 or 15. This one was, uh, I think it was 18. And um, there's a lot of engines to, to be adding to a pack and they all have, well, they don't all have different torque curves, but th th they're very different um, types of engine or styles of engine or, or how, how they're used. So I really had to sort of tweak and tune every single one of them just to make sure that they were, that they were what, what I wanted them to be. Like a wreck on top of the bridge. Interesting that there's the, the, the I guess a glitch in the lighting that's got the flashing lights underneath the bridge. Because I don't think you would really see that in real life. Cool. Let's get going. Go ahead and close my window. 64, which if you're from Texas, 64 is going to feel cold most of the time anyway. Disclaimer, if you're from the Dallas-Fort Worth area, because um, not all of Texas is cold, I'm going to bump the cruise up to 65, so I want to see if we can make a bit of progress here. No, no I'm not. I said at 45, that's what the speed limit is. Wow, it dropped to 35. Okay. How long has it got to take me? 45 minutes. That added an hour. That diversion added an hour to my trip. Um, well, I, I had the hour in the bank. I had plenty of spare time. Not a big deal. Not going to be late. But I think if this were an urgent delivery, I would be late. And you don't like to be late in the game because you don't get any money for it. Gearing is pretty much set up perfectly. We're doing 45 miles an hour, 1100 revs. Um, that is um, pretty much where where the engine wants to be. So I'm I'm very happy with my choice. The, the truck keeps flashing people. I may have to turn off turn off the automatic main beam. I mean it is it is kind of cool, but I I just don't know whether I need it or not. Bump my speed up to 55. See, it uses main beam, and I probably wouldn't, wouldn't use it there in, in, in real life. Uh, I can hear noise in the other room because some people in the family are unable to keep quiet. Sometimes that's very frustrating, you know. The door's closed, you try and keep quiet, but nope. I don't think it helps that this truck is kind of quiet. So I would possibly be putting my main beam on a little more aggressively and then turning it off a bit more aggressively too, but no no real complaints. Uh, I'll go ahead and bump the speed up to 65. I really want to get there um, in, in good time. We, we, we're going to be getting close, but all the same. Quick external view in just a second while we clear this corner. See if we see anything. Nope, nothing. Destination. That was quick. We should use the engine brake here. Scroll off a bit of speed, so we're going to turn right and then immediately turn left. Oh, so it's so we're just taking pickups from one drape dealership to another. Okay. So it looks like I've got about eight miles per gallon, which I am not unhappy with. I do think I could polish that a little bit. It's not a particularly heavy cargo, and it's not. Wow, it's right over the side wall there. 
Not a particularly heavy cargo, um, well optimized gearing and only 8 miles per gallon, but I'm not too unhappy with, with 8. And it, it's just a game. It, yes, it's a simulation, but it, it's just a game. Oh, nice easy drop as well. I think I went with the easy drop rather than the automatic. I've got here, I think it's a cool option. We're here. Okay, well... That was a pretty straightforward trip. I didn't ex have any dramas. I didn't expect any. The one diversion at the end, yeah, that's fine. The truck in its Fitzgerald Green looks great. <laughs> it's using main beam. I think it's the difference between the real world and, and the game. Um, my own car has automatic headlights um, and it doesn't activate main beam if you're going less than 30 miles an hour. But anyway, I am certainly happy with that result. Let's take a look and see how well we did. So 207 miles, I'm a little squeaky right now, and just 25.8 gallons. So that's not, not bad economy, and it is pretty much exactly eight. Great, well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video, and if you have, you know what to do. If you haven't, you also know what to do, and uh, stick around. You can subscribe if you want to. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Goodbye.